Dupix it helps you do more with less asthma and can help you breathe better in as little as two weeks. Dupixent is an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma that's not for sudden breathing problems. Dupixent can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. Get help right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about new or worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Ask your specialist about Dupixent. Tomorrow on ET, two big exclusives. We're with Sexiest Man Alive, Paul Rudd and Michael J. Fox talking his return to the future. This was a level of, of celebrity that I, I never imagined existed in any good way. Plus, Jody Sweeten is back to guest co-host. Also, this is the last week to attend Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Studios. For tickets and info, hit up there. Happening now. Election Day is November 8th, but you can cast your ballot now. We talk with voters who came out on the first day of early voting. Watching a cold front headed our way with it. Some storms possible later on tonight and get ready for some very gusty winds behind it. I'll have all the details in just a bit. And family and friends honoring the legacy of a teacher and artist with an altar at the Worthless Fest celebration. What you will see there next. The News at 5 starts right now. The polls are open. Early voting in the midterm election began this morning across Texas. The governor's race, the county judge's race, some of the biggest races we're following. Garrett Berger joins us now live from Lions Field. Tell us how things are looking on turnout and so forth. Well, Lions Field right now, you can see behind me, there is a line out the door. But don't worry, if you come across a location like this, you can cast your ballot at any one of the 51 early voting locations here in Bear County, which many Bear County voters have already taken advantage of. On the first day of early voting, Governor Greg Abbott came through There's San Antonio, pushing the hundreds of his supporters gathered at Chris Madrid's to get out and your, vote your and to do it quickly. I need you to go vote early today. So what, what I have here is I have the closest location to where we are right now. It wasn't a plea only passing Republican lips, though. Judge Peter Sakai, the Democratic candidate for Bear County judge, urged voters to vote early before casting his own ballot. We have an election that really is going to make a difference, and we need to vote. Be prepared, though. The ballot is a long one, with federal, state, county, and numerous judgeship races. This is our second general election with no straight party. And so it, it's taking the voters a little bit longer to get through those races. The Bear County Elections Administrator said turnout in the first half of the day was about 15,000 voters. We're going to watch it hour by hour, but right now we're matching 2018. The line stretched out the door at Lions Field. I think it was like 30, 35 minutes or so. Though with the opportunity presenting itself, she couldn't resist. I was actually on Broadway and I thought, oh, might as well just jump on it today. That's why. <laughs> The polls close at 6 o'clock today, but you've still got 11 more days to vote early if you want to, plus Election Day itself on November 8th. Now, you can use this QR code on the screen to find a complete list of polling locations and hours of operation, as well as what you need to bring with you. It'll also bring up all of KSAT's election coverage. Live at Lions Field, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. Let's check out traffic right now on this Monday, and we're at... 410 and Crossroads, and you can see things are moving very smoothly in both directions out there, as well as the loops that go over. And should mention, it's a pretty nice day outside. Yeah, it turned into a nice day after us, uh, morning light rain that didn't add up to much. I mean, we're talking 307 inch and just caused some wet roadways. We got the sun and temperatures jumped into the 80s. Floresville 89, Eagle Pass up to 91, Lakey 86 degrees, Bulverde now at 85 and Myco 87. But a cold front is headed our way. That's going to stir things up a little bit later on tonight. There's a time frame tonight between about 9 p.m. and midnight where I do think a few thunderstorms will develop about a 30% chance. So coverage is going to be pretty limited and they'll be fast movers. But what does develop does have the chance of becoming strong to severe with some straight line gusty winds being the primary threat. But I do think our biggest headline isn't the thunderstorms and even the chance of an isolated severe storm tonight. Very windy non thunderstorm gusts tonight into tomorrow. We'll tell you just how gusty it's going to be and how long it'll last coming right up, Ursula. Thank you, Adam. 
New at five, a former SAPD officer's day in court on charges of child pornography, bri bribery and misuse of public information is in serious jeopardy. The felony cases against Eric Rodriguez, Rodriguez rather may not happen after a judge tossed out the search warrants used to gather evidence. Last summer, the detective in the case admitted in court that she'd omitted information in the affidavit for the officer's first search warrant the 14 year veterans cell phone that led to today's 30 page ruling where the judge listed many more mistakes as well. To learn more about where this leaves the case, you can head over to KSAT.com. A man convicted of murder asked for forgiveness and leniency during the sentencing hearing today. Gregory Morrison pled guilty to the 2020 murder of Anne Marie Black outside of a pilot flying J convenience store. Morrison shot Black four times over a dispute, apparently over money. Morrison took a plea deal in this case, could have been sentenced up to 30 years in prison, but he was asking for 20 years instead. He was sentenced to 28. I'd like to offer my condolences to everyone that was affected by this. You know, I, I know it was a horrible thing, and, and if I could go back and undo it, I, I would undo it. But he can't. 187th District Court Judge Stephanie Boyd sentenced Morrison. He's eligible for parole after serving half of that sentence. Coming up at 6, what Black's daughter and sister had to say to Morrison after he was sentenced to murder. A man from Spring Branch area is facing human trafficking charges. Take a look at 58-year-old Mark Stephen Jameson. New Braunfels police say that he had been paying an underaged girl to have a sexual relationship with him since May. Jameson was arrested on Friday, taken to the Comal County Jail. He later posted bond, which was set at $100,000. Officers say Jameson could end up facing additional charges, too. She was there the day of the shooting, the Uvalde school staffer speaking for the first time about the claim in the early days after the mass shooting in Uvalde that she had left a door propped open during an attack. Emilia Martin was at the center of the accusation by DPS days after the May 24 shooting. State law enforcement claimed that a teacher left a door propped, which allowed the shooter to enter the school. Marin said she tried frantically to save the lives of students that day. While DPS would later retract their accusation against her, Marin said her life will never be the same. We're going to have more on this story coming up on the News at 6. Another school shooting leaving a St. Louis campus in mourning. Two were killed by a gunman before police took down the shooter. It all happened just after 9 o'clock this morning at a visual and performing arts high school there. Police say the shooter, who is in his 20s, broke into the locked down campus, shot and killed a woman as well as a teenage girl. Another student says she got away only when the shooter's gun in her face appeared to jam. Six others were shot. They're being treated for their wounds. It's been more than 12 years in San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers still trying to solve a murder mystery. They're looking for the person who shot and killed 20 year old Eric Mendoza back on October 21st of 2010. It happened on a road called Village Path. It's actually near Loop 410 and Eisenhower. People who live in the area say they heard several gunshots and the sounds of vehicles speeding away. Mendoza found dead at the scene. If you have any information that can help find his killer, Call 210-224-STOP. You could receive a reward of up to $20,000. A comedian and actor who turned into a social media star during the COVID lockdowns has now died. Leslie Jordan reportedly dying in a car crash in Hollywood this morning. It's not clear if the 67-year-old died in the crash or if he suffered a medical emergency beforehand. Prior to his daily postings on YouTube and TikTok that went viral during the pandemic, Jordan was best known for his work on the TV show Will and Grace and American Horror Story. Jordan's agent released a statement saying the world is definitely a much darker place today without the love and light of Leslie Jordan. A man who spent eight years in prison for crimes against children he never committed is fighting for exoneration. It's just one of the injustices uncovered in part two of our South Texas Crime Stories podcast that dives into the satanic panic hysteria that spread across the United States in the 80s and early 90s. Now, most of the cases were fake, but with real consequences, including being labeled a sex offender, a tag that stays with you for life. The families of five wrongly charged now fighting to have their names cleared. Host Erica Hernandez and Lee Waldman explore the phenomena in part one. Part two drops tomorrow morning. 
We're going to hear what happened in court this summer between a man who was sentenced to decades in prison, but now his son has recanted the whole story. You can tune in to South Texas Crime Stories on Apple Podcasts or Spotify Podcasts, and don't forget to subscribe. It is a huge blow to the city of Windcrest, which is losing a huge employer. Rackspace Technology leaving the old Windsor Park Mall. It renovated back in 2008, and it's now going to set up shop in North San Antonio. Windcrest Mayor Dan Reese confirming the move, saying the company indicated it wanted to be in a smaller space in an area of town where most of its workforce lives. The chief marketing officer for the company says it plans to move its operations to Ridgewood Plaza 2, which is off of 281 near Redland Road. While the move is set to happen sometime in 2023, no official date's been set. Rackspace, a cloud storage company that's been anchored in Windcrest for the past 14 years. We are just days away from the 10th annual Dia de los Muertos Fest at Hemisphere. Tiffany Huerta shows us how the community is coming together to build an altar for a local artist who had a passion for teaching. She was a school teacher at Edison, but she was also a huge part of the local theater community. The family and friends of Maria Ibarra yeah. are coming together to celebrate her life. One of her most important legacies, I guess, is her legacy as an educator. Um, she really really um, dedicated her life and career to students. An altar is being built in honor of Maria, who died last year. She was always into theater. Her first play was in high school, where she either didn't speak at all or only had one line. But after that, she fell in love with it. Special items fill the altar that will be showcased at this year's Muertos Fest at Hemisphere. So it's going to be like a mini open mic through the whole Muertos Fest. Anyone who wants to could get up and they could share a song, a story, tell a joke. Loved ones say Maria was outgoing, understanding, and would light up a room. I know that anyone who, you know, like my mom loved was really lucky because she just was able to give love in this really like radical way. It means a lot just to remember her, keep honoring her. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Once again, the 10th annual Dia de los Muertos Festival begins on October 29th. You can scan the QR code on the screen and get more information. And if you can't make it to the festival, you can catch our primetime special, which will air on Sunday at 8 p.m. right here on KSAT 12, KSAT.com and KSAT+. Plus. Still ahead on the news at 5, a handful of recall alerts have been issued for products that might be sitting in your cabinet or refrigerator right now. We're going to tell you why they're being recalled and what to look out for to keep your family safe. I'm Myra Arthur here in the newsroom with a look at what we're working on for the news at 6 o'clock today. An altar in honor of the 53 migrants who died after being smuggled in the back of a tractor trailer found in southwest San Antonio. Their face is not the only ones memorialized here, though. This altar also remembers the victims of Buffalo and Uvalde. Tonight at 6, the efforts now underway to create a permanent memorial in San Antonio. Plus, KSAT explains the Latino vote. I believe that many Hispanic voters have been hesitant to vote because they felt as if their voting doesn't matter, as if their vote doesn't count. You hear about the importance of the Latino vote every election cycle, but are there misconceptions about what that means? In this case, that explains, we're hearing the perspectives of several voters on what the Latino vote means to them. Case that explains and a lot more coming your way today at six o'clock. We'll see you then. Thank you so much, Myra. Now to some recall alerts that we wanted to let you know about. Several popular brands of dry shampoo being recalled because of a potential cancer risk. And a sausage maker recalling tons of meat you may have in your freezer right now. 12 your Sides' Marilyn Moritz explains the dangers in tonight's recall roundup. 
It's a huge recall of dry shampoo. Unilever is pulling 19 popular aerosol sprays because they may have elevated levels of benzene. That's a chemical known to cause cancer. The brands are Dove, Suave, Nexus, Tresemme, and Bedhead, all made before 2021. Unilever says it knows of no health problems linked to these shampoos, but is recalling them as a precaution. We have a link on our website so you can get your money back. Don't eat the sausage. Bob Evans is recalling more than 7,000 pounds of Italian pork sausage because it may have bits of blue rubber in it. The chubs were sold nationwide and have a use or freeze by date of November 26th. Take it back or toss it out. Parent alert, more than 100,000 baby blankets sold at Home Goods, Marshalls, and TJ Maxx are recalled. The threads can come loose and babies can get trapped or strangled. The Mittal International blankets were sold since last year in various colors. Take it back. And this gun may be a toy, but the danger is real. Gel Blaster of Austin is recalling more than 62,000 Surge Model 1 toy guns. There are dozens of reports of the lithium-ion battery inside smoking or catching fire. Contact the company for a refund. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Looking outside with live cam, it's been kind of a mostly cloudy day up until this after, late this afternoon, I should say. And... We've got to keep our hold on to our hats tonight. Yeah, and I think that's really our main and big headline is the gusty winds that are on the way. Yes, we will have a few storms later tonight. I think minimal coverage and minimal rainfall expected with those storms. Actually, best chances are closer to the Gulf Coast line. The main headline, the bottom one right here, becoming very windy later tonight. We're talking non thunderstorm winds later tonight through the first part of the day. So let's fart, start with here our rain chances and take a look at our just isolated chances here. About 30 percent, nine o'clock through midnight is what we're expecting. That narrow window of opportunity for some of those showers and storms. Here's the big picture. Cold front with a low pressure system in the panhandle that's draped southward now. Severe thunderstorms already associated with this north of San Angelo. The yellow box there uh, outside of our area indicates that severe thunderstorm watch, meaning conditions are conducive for severe thunderstorms and even some snow on the backside of this in parts of New Mexico, especially in the higher elevations. So this cold front, it's headed our way. It's going to make it here later on tonight, probably by about 10 p.m. or so, and with it, a few thunderstorms. Here's our future cast, and I think this gives you a good illustration of what to expect in terms of the radar with the coverage or lack thereof of the thunderstorms tonight. Eight o'clock, a few potentially developing in the hill country. You get to nine, 10 o'clock, and there's a brief opportunity in and around San Antonio and then northward up I-35. We get past 10 o'clock toward 11 and midnight, and the chances rise east of town. We're talking Gonzales, Hallettsville, Carn City, Nixon Smiley, better odds of rainfall there in some of our eastern counties than what we'll have locally. But again, between about 9 p.m. and midnight, we could see a few brief thunderstorms and even a rogue severe thunderstorm possible as well. Let's talk winds. OK, right now it's out of south southeast at 10 miles per hour. Not a big deal. Some gusts up to 20 at times. That's actually pretty typical for us around here. But this is going to change significantly. This is our future cast for what you can expect in terms of wind gusts, not a steady wind, but the wind gusts periodically. We highlighted the hill country and even up toward Austin and northwest Bear County in red here because that's the area of the highest wind gusts likely. 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, we're talking some wind gusts likely between 50 and 60 miles per hour, especially in the hill country, but potentially even sneaking down into parts of San Antonio, north of Highway 90. Bulverde, we're expecting a gust up to about 54 miles per hour at 7 a.m. tomorrow through 9, 10 a.m., just as gusty, but then later on in the day after lunch, the wind will gradually pump the brakes later on in the day tomorrow. So here's another way to look at it with the line graph. Notice those wind gusts peaking around sunrise tomorrow in excess of 50 miles per hour. This could lead to a few localized power outages that, uh, that can happen with these types of non thunderstorm winds. And here's the main thing too: please secure your Halloween decorations. A lot of inflatables out there and even those 14 foot skeletons make sure they're secured down. Otherwise, they may end up 
a few blocks down. Our stock temperatures right now 80s to near 90 degrees and tomorrow will start the day at 55 at 7 a.m. with those very gusty winds and then the wind slackens later in the afternoon and evening. A high temperature tomorrow of 78 degrees. It's so right around 80 give or take. Stinson on the south side 80 degrees. Bernie Bulverde about 77 along with Gonzales tomorrow afternoon. By the way, a steady northwesterly wind in excess of 20 miles per hour most of the day tomorrow and then the rest of the week pretty quiet till another cold front hits Thursday night, early Friday, giving us the chance of some scattered showers and storms. And look at those highs right near 80 most of the week with mornings as cool as 49 by Wednesday. You know, good tip on the inflatables. We don't need any witches really flying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or ghosts flying around town. That would be bad. All right, I remember when this guy played high school ball at St. Anthony's. Now he's a spur. Yeah, and uh, he's in the NBA, right, exactly. So he's progressed that far, and now he's a member of the Silver and Black. When we go back, we're talking about Charles Bassey, and his career has now taken a turn towards San Antonio again, and the Dallas D saves the day. Coming up. All right, San Antonio's first round, they get three in a row on the road tonight in Minnesota when they face the Wolves in the first of two games in Minneapolis. This after they were able to beat both the Pacers in Indiana on Friday, the Sixers in Philly on Saturday. Odds makers in Las Vegas didn't give the Spurs much of a chance this season with their rebuilt young lineup telling us the Spurs would win 23 and a half games. But the Silver and Black are out to prove them wrong, including tonight where they're 10 point underdogs. Spurs have signed free agent center Charles Bassey to a two way contract. He's just about to start his second season in the NBA after he's a second round draft pick by the Sixers in 2021. That has been confirmed by the Spurs. If the name sounds familiar, it should. Bassey, who is from Nigeria, is now 6 foot 11, 235 pounds, played for St. Anthony High School right here in San Antonio. Tip time tonight at 7 o'clock. We'll have highlights for you tonight on the Night Beat. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys are now 5-2. and two. That's after they were able to beat the Detroit Lions in Arlington on Saturday with a dramatic second half. That's after they were down 6-3 to three at the halftime on Dak Prescott's first game back since injuring his throwing hand in the season opening loss to Tampa Bay. They're only putting up three points in the first half. The Cowboys clobbered the Lions in the second half by outscoring Detroit 21 to nothing, with the Cowboys leading 10-6. Turning point in the game is when running back Jamal Williams fumbled the ball inside the one. That's the first fumble of his career. That was one of five takeaways by the Dallas D on the day. Ezekiel Elliott was able to score two touchdowns on the ground. Prescott was able to throw for one more in the 24-6 victory. This is a great team win. Uh, this is what I've been watching for the last five weeks, this defense, the special teams, um, and just us playing complimentary football. And it was just, uh, it's just great to be back and be a part of it. Next up, the Chicago Bears come calling on Sunday at noon. For the fourth time in the last six seasons, the Houston Astros are back in the World Series after they were able to sweep the New York Yankees in four straight to win the American League Championship Series. The game-winning run was delivered by Alex Bregman in the top half of the seventh, a single to drive in ALCS MVP Jeremy Pena, and that propelled the Astros to a 6-5 to five win. Now the Astros will face the Phillies in the 2022 World Series. That will begin this Friday with the first two games in Houston, all at 7 o'clock, followed by Monday and Tuesday's games in Philadelphia. And coming up at 6 o'clock, why UT head football coach Coach Steve Sarkeesian is apologizing to Longhorn fans coming up at six. Interesting. And that Houston gave him uh, Yankee fans speechless. You don't see that very often. No, not at all. Yeah, last <laughs> night. All. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. Main window for storm opportunity this evening is about 9 p.m. to midnight, and I think there'll be pretty few and far between around town. The rest of this week, very windy tomorrow morning, and then just pleasant and fall like the rest of the week. Thanks, Adam, and thank you for watching the News at 5 with us. World News Up next. We'll see you back here at 6.